a royal favourite. It's seen really well every year by our late and beautiful monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. We're talking about the wonderful Chelsea Flower Show. We told you recently, didn't we, how some nutty activists decided to spray, uh, you know, orange sort of dust over someone's particular uh, structure, which was incredibly cruel when you think about it. But as I said, it's been visited by royals for many years, dating way back of course, to the 1930s when it was in its initial stages. What's interesting I also find about this particular story is if that particular sphere of work is your living, why on earth would you say such things? This particular celebrity has basically claimed that the Chelsea Flower Show is too middle class, too home counties, and too white and too middle aged. You could say that's everything about this particular individual too. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning. Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. By the way, on this day, yes, we've all had one. I think we have. People who are watching this channel, I know what you're thinking. No, I'm talking about this. That's right, the long playing record. LP, album, vinyl, whatever generation you want to call it. Because on this day, um, in 1948, uh, by Columbia Records, they unveiled the very first prototype of the long play record and which really revolutionized music didn't it because if you think up until that point you had 78 records and then you know we had 45s it really i believe and i'm not sure about this but i believe it was frank sinatra's songs for swinging lovers that really tipped over the album sales in america because it was again i think it was an ep it wasn't a full album but very successful it was uh, for capitol records nelson riddle and of course the voice himself frank sinatra can you believe it and now of course we're, it's coming back i know yeah vinyl's coming back yes i didn't think it ever went away back as ever to your breaking story of the day we're talking about a man of course who's made a career um in front of uh, television screens for the last 30 years now uh, very much liked by royals also monty don the gardener from gardener's world recently spoke out about how the chelsea flower show was too white too middle class two home counties and too middle-aged you're looking at monty you get the picture. Uh, apart from, of course, a nice rinse through his hair, many people might say, well, this is applicable to you. Now, why did he say this? Well, you know, there have no problems at the Chelsea Flower Show in making sure that all sectors go along, take part, and love to go and visit. So one could surmise the fact that for a while, at least he's been out of the public eye and trying to shake some attention. Again, you know, it goes back to what we were saying uh, the other day about the uh, BBC news host, Clive Myrie, mocking the ex prime minister, the right honorable Boris Johnson and other members of the government, you know, Monty has a very successful career and has enjoyed a phenomenal successful career with the BBC, but seemingly alienating the very audience that tune in, read things online, all about their very favourite flower show. Is he unrepentant? Does he now say, no, you know, I regret saying that? Absolutely not. He sticks by it and says that if it's to evolve, it needs to be more multicultural. Well, I didn't realise that gardening was racist, Monty, you know. I think people just enjoy flowers, uh, greenery, uh, watching things grow, whatever race you're from. I think around the world, people have planted things for millions of years or whatever, thousands of years, and just enjoyed nature's growth. So for now, I would surmise, and I'd love to know what you think to this particular story, has Monty literally gone don? Literally, is he now creating his own, shall we say, backlash? Because a pylon did ensue over on social media. But as ever, I'd love to know what you think to these particular comments by someone who really should know better. But more importantly, the true story behind that is he simply wants some attention. Or am I wrong? Should we now pop him back in the potting shed and not remove him perhaps until next spring as a bit of a, well, telling off? Let me know in the comments below. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.